Welcome to Macy's Cooking Corner. My name is Richard Dogan and I'm filling in this week for Awful Day who's on vacation. Today we have John Lee who is going to be cooking Parmesan chicken for us tonight. Parmesan chicken. Parmesan, that's what's that. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No problem. You say aluminium or? T tomato, tomato, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So, I'll just turn the time over to you then. All right. Okay. Yes, like I said, my name is John Lee. I'm going to make a wonderful recipe. It's called Parmesan chicken. And it's, and it's an old, old family recipe that I created years ago. First ingredient is chopped garlic. And one thing that is my favorite is garlic. I like everything with garlic. So, you put that in one bowl, the chopped garlic. And of course, as with any good um, cook, you have olive oil. So you take about three tablespoons of olive oil. You put it in this bowl right here. And it's going to be the dipping for the chicken. Now we put that, we mix this up, we put it aside. Then we have the dry ingredients. The dry ingredients include several more things. It includes about two cups of parmesan of breadcrumbs. You put that in a large bowl. So you're able to coat the chicken. And the olive oil makes it so it'll stick. So we have breadcrumbs. About, about one to two cups. Then we have Parmesan cheese. And that we have probably about, it actually calls for two thirds cups, but I forgot, so we'll use about a half and a little bit more. It's just enough to season it. So, like with any baking, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, more or less to um taste. Then we have uh, ground pepper, which is also the taste. And with this, we probably use about about one to two t um, teaspoons. Put that with there and there. And then next, we have. We have basil, and it is for flavor. So a lot of these things don't have to be exact. You kind of do it to taste, but it's usually between one to two table, um, one to two teaspoons. Me, I'm kind of kind of hard for me to create a recipe because I just do things by flavor and and and, and touch and, and appearance. And you get all those ingredients together. Shake them up. Get them all mixed up. Shake it not stir. Yes. Now, what we have is we do the, we um, dip the chicken in the olive oil. We dip it in the dry ingredients. Before we do that, now also I want to make a note. We did um, preheat the oven to 350 degrees and it cooks for about 30 minutes. Also, of course, you gotta preheat it. You um, spray your pan with, uh, with olive oil, my favorite ingredient. Then you take the chicken, this, dip it in there, kind of coat it, and you do it in the dry ingredients. Dip it here, so it's nice and coated. Kind of use the tongue, kind of, so it's all covered. And nice Parmesan cheese, basil, ground pepper, and breadcrumbs. And then you place it into the pan. And you repeat this with each chicken breast. Now this chicken breast you can get at Macy's, 
And so it's easy as Calico. Either will, and you might get it trimmed, and that would be fine. You kind of coat it like this. It makes it, olive oil also makes it nice and juicy. And nothing, nothing worse than a dry chicken. You want it nice and juicy. Get that well coated. And you put that in there. And you repeat this a uh, third time. This and uh, it looks like you went out of olive oil. So, like I say, put a little bit more. And the garlic is still there, so that's fine. Then you like this. Once again, get it nice and coated. So it gets all kinds of flavor. Better than flavorful chicken. And it's a very easy recipe, as you can tell. And I'm sure if you have a, a son or a daughter who's about 12 years old, they could probably do this. No problem at all. Maybe I'm speaking from experience, because that's when I learned how to cook. But I believe that if most kids give it a shot, they would have no problem with it. And it's, a good, it's important for us as parents to have our kids cook. It teaches them lifelong skills. Not only if they go to school, if they go on a mission, or if they just leave home. There's nothing worse than a kid who can't cook. You all should be able to cook. Did it have to be fancy? It's just important to be self-reliant. Then, you tell, the chicken is nice and coated. And the oven has been preheated to 350. And welcome back to Macy's Cooking Corner. I'm now here with Connor Lee, John Lee's son, who is going to be making us a Cream pie? Uh, yes. Okay. Chocolate mint pie. Chocolate mint pie. Yes. Okay. And I see you're already got dog yeah, food here or something. Uh, no, this is our chocolate mint cookies. So for our crust, we need to crush these up. Okay. We don't we don't exactly want them as a powder. We kind of want them in small chunks. Okay. Because um, when when it's done, it needs to look really nice and. It, it, what, we want to make it look delicious. Well, good. So, I like that. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll get out of the way and you show us how it's done. So, whenever we crush this, we want to use a rolling pin. If, if, if you don't have one on hand, just use anything you can to smash it. We want it in nice, steady chunks. So, with the rolling pin, you kind of just want to roll at it. You just want to break up these chunks. You just want to break up the chocolate cookies. Now this does take time, so you need a lot of patience for it. <laughs> Needs to be pounded with your hand just a little bit. It helps at times. I'm going to pick it up. I want to make sure you have it in chunks. There's still a couple big chunks out there. In there, so we're going to smash those out. Okay. Here, here's our cookies. We still have a couple big chunks, nothing too big to worry about. And what we want to do is we've already got some melted butter. Now, for this, you want a full stick of butter to melt. Reason being is, it, it depends on your quantity you're doing here. So we just melted down the full stick. I'm just gonna take it, pour it in here like this. And we're just gonna take our little bowl and put it off the side here. We're gonna take our fork and we're just gonna mix this around. 
Now it will get a little bit messy, so don't worry, you can clean it up. <laughs> and what we want to do is we want to get it all nice and moist. Now what the butter does is it kind of acts as a glue. What, what it will do is it will act as a, uh, act, it will hold it together. And when you put it overnight to freeze, it holds it together and it makes a really nice, tasty crust. Now, we, now we'll use this constantly throughout this. So, let's just continue to mix this. We kind of want to make this ruby. So, the way you know you got good is when it starts to shine a bit. Now, when that's mixed, we may not need all of it, but we're going to see if we do. We're going to take a nice pie sheet right here, nice little pie pan, and we're just going to scoop it in just a little bit. Like that, we're going to set this off to the side for a second. And we're going to smooth this out in the pan. Now it's going to be really loose at first, that's okay, because when it dries it's going to get nice and hard. It's going to act as a really good back, so we're going to need a little more, because we want it up on the sides too. Try, try to get as little open space as you can because whenever because when we're making this we're going to put some chocolate whipped cream in there. So we're going to want very little space. So we're going to just get it up on the sides here. If we can. While trying to maintain a flat base. Get a little more in here. Now there are some dry areas, I'm trying to avoid those for the moment. We're going to take some gloves so we can avoid this little sticky hazard. What we're going to do is we're just going to flatten it out. Go give it a nice, flat, comfortable base. And what, what it should look like is it should look like this. So you get a really nice smooth base as possible. Won't be perfect, so don't worry. And we're going to take our base and we're going to put it in the fridge to freeze overnight. We are now going to make our chocolate whipped cream. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our mixing bowl here nice little clean mixing bowl and what we're going to do is we are going to take two cups we're going to take a cup and we are going to fill it up now we can get our little we can get our base whipped cream from Macy's any store you wish Preferably a quart. So when you're putting this in, you want two cups. And you should you should have about that much right there. About that. We're gonna take our chocolate powder here. I'm gonna open this up. Real quick, we're also going to rinse our one cup. We're going to take our powder. We want to make sure we get at least a full cup here, so we're going to put a little more in. Close them up. And we're just going to Pour it in our whipped cream. So we still got our same half cup. It's 
It's a little messy, that's where I'm doing it over the bowl. So we got our two cups, now we take our half cup, and we want to fill that up. Let's open that up a little more. There we go, now we can get more out. So we got our half cup in there, and then we're going to put it on our mixer. We're going to also grab our teaspoon. We also want to put some mint. The reason why we want the mint is it's part of the ingredients here. We want, we want it to look really nice, and we want it to taste good. So, we're going to just... Pour that in. Now we want three tables. We want three teaspoons. Four te four teaspoons, I mean. I'm losing my head here. <laughs> three. Four. Right. This this is our gelatin. What it's gonna do is when we mix it in, it's gonna give us a little texture. This is going to go right on top of our bake. It's gonna go right on top of our crust. And we're going to put our whipped cream on top of this. So it, it's basically like a whipped cream type recipe here. So we're just going to pour this in. The reason why we want our crust to be refrigerated is when we have that nice solid base with the gelatin, we're also going to freeze that too. Preferably overnight. Reason being is when it's overnight, we can get more space for that gelatin. It gets that really smooth texture. So now we are going to mix this. And preferably you want about eight. Right now we're just going to do six. Now every now and then you're going to want to stop so you can get Take your spoon here, and you're just going to scrape off the sides, because you want to get as much in there as you can. Now I know it's an early stage flat, but you still want it to look nice. Okay, so we're going to open this up for a second so we can put on our sugar. So we're just going to fill this up nicely. Oops, a little bit over that. Oh well, it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just going to pour that in. Now it's preferably that it is powdered sugar. Reason being is it, it makes it so much easier than normal sugar. I'm going to put our sugar off to the side there. Get rid of this. And we're going to lock it. And put it up to 8. Okay, we're going to stop it. Get some more down under the sides. Scrape it down off the sides. We want to get as much down in here as possible. This is my this is my favorite part about mixing. So we're just going to set that off to the side. Now, if you don't want to get your now if you don't want to get your counter super dirty, it's best if you put a couple of paper towels off to the side. 
so that you don't make such a mess on the sides there. Because it does get really messy. Kick it back up to eight. Now, real quick, since you won't be able to hear hear me very well over this, um, when you check you check your crust, what you want to do is you kind of just want to tap it just a little bit. And what you want to feel for is if it's really moist or if it's or if it's a little loose, then you just want to leave it alone. Now, right now it's fine, but we're going to leave it in the fridge for right now so we can keep it cool. Now, also when you're making this, you don't want to you don't want to cook it. You don't want to put it in the oven or anything. Because that can ruin, that can destroy your base. So let's continue here. Okay, so it's not exactly perfect, but that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to put it into our base right now. So let's get this out of the way. Now, you remember before, whenever we looked at it, it was really glossy looking? This is what you want it to look like, so so the audience in here can see. You want it to look like that. So now we're gonna open this up. And we're just gonna mix this out just a little bit. Now it's okay if it's a little bit of a liquid because it's gonna gel up overnight and it's gonna solidify a bit more. We're going to take our pasta spatula and we're just going to gently just roll this over it. Okay, we're going to stop that for a second. And we're just going to smooth it over. Now that we have our new clean bowl, what we're going to do is now we're going to start our topping. Now, we're going to use the rest of our whipped cream right here. And you can just go ahead and pour that in. Because we already know it's going to be two cups. Now that's gone. We can throw that away. And then we need three tablespoons. Oh, wait, no, I have missed. Yeah, three tablespoons. Of vanilla. Now, the best type of vanilla for this is just your average vanilla extract. You can also get this at Macy's. So we're just gonna pour that in. One, two, and three. Okay, now that we got that done, now we're going to grab our one fourth cup and we're going to put more powdered sugar in. So here we got our powdered sugar and our one fourth cup. Okay, so now we got our one fourth cup of powdered sugar. Now, also, if you don't have powdered sugar, you can just use conventional sugar too, it works as well. So th this is what it should look like on the inside. So we got our chunks there. Let's put it back on our mixer. We're gonna put our another mixer head right here back on. Yep, there goes one of my gloves. And we're gonna run it. Probably start off at six so you don't make a massive mess and lose a lot of your whipped cream. So just set it right there at six and just let it run for a little bit. Okay, we're gonna cut it for a second. We're gonna pull this up. And we're just gonna just pick off our slide sides with our spoon with our little rubber spatula. Kind of like the rubber spatulas because we can get more off. Off the sides and into the bowl. 
All right. And we're going to kick it back up to 10. Okay, so we're going to let this sit for just a second. Let it get some air. Because if it over mixes, it just doesn't look good at all. So we're going to check our pie real quick to see how that's doing. And also I'm going to clean up my glasses just a little. So at this stage where we're mixing, this is what our pie looks like. It's looking good. So we're going to take our spoon here. And we're just going to pick up some. And we're just going to put it on there. Now most of the time, this now this isn't perfect, I'm sorry about that. But um, most of the time it's going to be really smooth. Now for time's sake it's not going to look that smooth. So, Okay, so we're back. Now this is what our final product looks like. Really nice, really smooth. Now, I've, now this, this is how it should look. Now I over mix it just a little bit, but it's fine. Now right here on top we just have some nice little mint pieces. So what we did was we just took little mint pieces like this and we just broke them up and just scattered them over. Now the mint on top just acts as a decorative piece. You don't have to, but it's recommended that you do if you really want to look, make it look nice. And um, this was not, now I'm going to say this a lot right now. This was not at all cooked. You do not put it in the oven. This was all refrigerated, so it will be cold. And that, that's actually really good for it, and it tastes great. Um, before the show, we tested this out so we could experiment, make sure we have it correct. Because, like I said, when my, father, when my father did this, he did 20 years ago, so when we, when we went back over the recipe, he was basically going off his mind and memory. And this, this again, was our final product. We have our nice solid base on the sides here. You can see a little bit glimpses here. And then we have our chocolate underneath all our whipped cream. And then we just put the mint pieces on. Now, sometimes it's good to underdo it just a little bit. Not too much, just, just, just a small hair. Because it can even out, because it evens out. That, that's what I love about cooking. So, that, that's my part and it looks like our chicken is done. Okay, this is our final chicken product. Nice and, nice and juicy. And I will have... Ah, that's right. I get to taste test it because Off was not here to do that. Okay. Oh yeah. Juicy, garlic, yeah, that's great. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right. Okay. We'd like to thank John and his son Connor for showing us these cooking things. We want to invite you to visit us at Macy's Kitchen Corner at the uh, Macy's at Spanish Fork. And every Thursday we have a cooking show and lots of different varieties on that. Also, you can watch this on Channel 17 in Spanish Fork at 10 o'clock weekdays. And also you can find us on our Spanish Fork YouTube station. So don't miss a cooking show for any reason. You can come in, you can watch it on TV, or you can watch it on YouTube. Good night. <laughs>